Welcome to the Corporate Treasury 101 podcast. You might think that bank notes are dying out, but they still account for 75% of all payments globally. But how does cash get into our pockets to be spent with companies? How do companies manage the cash that they receive and get that cash where it needs to go to be invested? Perhaps it's a part of Corporate Treasury you haven't really thought about. Find out all in today's episode. If you want a concise overview of the fundamentals of corporate treasury, download our free ebook which explains just that. It even comes with an exclusive episode by Mike Richards explaining the roles in a treasury department and more. Find the link in the show notes below. And with that, on with the episode. So, Guillaume. Uh, I think a big part of corporate treasury is uh, cash management overall, right? How mm-hmm. does a company inflows and outflows of cash? We've talked about a lot. Yes. And, and linked to all of that is payments. Indeed. And payment systems. Yeah. Right? So it's uh, apparently a very interesting topic around corporate treasury. Of course. <laughs> as you doubt topics, it? As all topics are. <laughs> so take us through um, what happens to money when we make a payment. Exactly. I'm more than happy that you asked the question, Usam. It is. The payments journey is super interesting, especially in the world we are evolving in, right? Everything's connected. We are talking about massive volumes all around the world, different instruments, etc. Obviously, the world of payments is extremely complex, like many things. And there are so many different ways of executing a payment. You can, for instance, have a physical based one, right? Like when you go to the bakery and uh, buy the best pain au chocolat so far, because when you'll have your coffee, you'll have the best pain au chocolat ever. But so far, you are buying them and probably with cash money, right? Like banknotes. This is a form of payment. You have also checks. It's not that much used in Belgium, but you can find that in France, for instance. In the US, it's widely used. And also the different debit and credit cards, um, the new way of paying things like with the phones directly, with Apple Pay, Google Pay. And then we have all the corporate treasury instruments, the very corporate ones like electronic transfers, uh, SEPA payments that people may have heard about already, promissory notes, etc. That's really more um, corporate sided. So it's a lot. What would you like to know exactly some about so, payments? Okay, those are payment methods. Yes. Which I understand. Yes. Um, but what exactly happens to the money when we use any of these payment methods? So mm-hmm. Like, where does it go? How does it get processed? What's the point of the bank in between? Um, and how do different banks talk to each other? Like, what happens when a payment is made? Super clear. Okay. So let's do this. Um, we have so many instruments. We cannot detail all of them in one episode. Um, but let's break down what happens as you mentioned, to money, instrument by instrument, right? Which one would you like to start with first? Let's start start with cash. Sounds fair. It's good because actually it's something really tangible. Uh, Everybody knows what we are talking about, right? And when we win cash, it's not the same cash as in cash management. Here we're really talking about banknotes, coins, physical uh, money. So it's tangible and it's still widely used, especially in certain industries uh, and all areas of the world as we're going to see in a moment. But so retail companies, for instance, uh, use it widely. Clothes shops, we can think of, uh, bakeries and so on. Most of the people now accept credit cards, prepaid cards, etc. But cash is still widely used. And cash itself is made by the central banks, right? We talked about this in our uh, interest rates and inflation episode. Absolutely. A little no. bit, right? So expand on that a little bit. So what does that mean by where, where does the cash come from? Maybe give us a quick recap on Mm -hmm. why cash is made or when it's made and for what reasons. Yes. So, absolutely. We have a full detailed episode on how money is introduced or taken out of the markets. But there we were talking about money in general. Here we want to focus on cash. But that's spot on. Uh, In Europe, for instance, the people that issue and print the money, but here print physical money, Uh, is a collaboration between the European Central Bank and the different national central banks. Even though the European, the ECB, European Central Bank, still oversees everything, we still have national central banks uh, in the countries. Each year, there are a certain number of banknotes that is printed. And this is based on uh, the renewal needs, for instance, due to damaged existing banknotes, Um, the increase in demand. It can be that people use more and more or less and less uh, cash, paper cash. 
or potential seasonality, and so on. To give an order of magnitude, in 2017, those are not the freshest data, but that's what we can find on the ECB website, the French, German, and Italian central banks produced 1.7 billion units of 50 euros banknotes. I'll let you do the math. Do you want to quickly do it, Usam? Yeah, 50 times 1.7, 80 billion-ish. Oh, yeah. uh, something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's good, yeah. Let's say that. So in Europe, there are actually 11 high security printing works uh, that produce the bank notes on behalf of the European Central, uh, Central Banks. The ECB doesn't have printers in their offices. They delegate that to the printing works, 11 high security ones um, that do that. Okay, but I don't have a bank account with the ECB. Right? No. My bank account is with ING or someone else like this, right? Barclays. Uh, mm -hmm. So so how does the cash get in my pocket from the ECB? That's a very fair question. First of all, so you mentioned ING and Barclays. We are not sponsored by those banks. Um, yet. If, yet. If any of them wants to find us a podcast, please write us a bank. Yeah, actually, yes. But so happy to I'm send them on your way. <laughs> We are not discriminating any banks here. But so you indeed do not have a bank account at the ECB, but the bank you have your bank account at does. ING... Barclays, PNP, whatever banks you choose, they have a bank account at their national central bank and the European Central Bank. So, once produced, to answer to your question, the bank notes are distributed to the different national central banks of Europe. The national banks then inject the bank notes into the market via the banking system. And typically, retail banks order bank notes to their respective national central banks and put them at the disposal of the end user via cash dispensers. ATMs, typically. Okay, so this central bank or the US Treasury, for example, in the US, right? That's something else that we are come to okay. in a second, but so yes. Central bank would uh, distribute the banknotes to the different national banks that have a bank account with them? Yes. Okay, and then those national banks put the banknotes into the market via, like, if I take a withdrawal out of my account or whatever company, I assume, mm -hmm. also takes withdrawals out, like businesses and stuff? Absolutely. So just to rephrase quickly, the national central banks and the European central banks are working together and okay. they are then transferring the money onto the market via the retail banks, the private banks. Okay. The private banks are giving it, in a way, to the end user, not the national central banks directly. But other than that, that's, that's, that's it. Okay. And yeah, that's it. So what was your question? Again? I said the, the retail banks. Yes. To explain that, like, They take from the national banks then? They receive the physical cash from the national banks indeed. Obviously, they do not order as much as they want, right? Otherwise, we should stop the podcast right away and open our own bank. Um, but as for you, when you go in an ATM and you withdraw money, your bank account is debited from the corresponding amount, right? It will be the same for the retail banks. They have a bank account at the European Central Bank. And when they receive physical money, this amount is debited on their European Central Bank bank account. So that's how it works. And then the bank notes are distributed onto the market via the retail banks. Is that clear? Yeah, okay, I think so. So you have the ECB in Europe, right? The European Central Bank, yes. to the national banks, to the retail banks. Exactly. To the individuals. Spot on. Okay. And what you said about the US. So that's the European Central Bank. How does mm. it work in the US? Is Indeed. it different? So I'm, I like that you asked this question because that's taking care of our audience. Um, most of our listeners, a great part of our listeners are in the US. So they, they love your French accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's take it like this. Which is funny because actually the French audience really likes the British accent that you have. So, so there you go. See, so all in all. Why do we not do so well in France? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to dig into that. So for the US, indeed, I think it's important to cover it. Um, the process is rather similar, to be honest. The entity that decides how much money to print in the United States is the US Federal Reserve also known as the Fed. But the Fed doesn't print money directly neither. This is delegated to the Treasury Department's Bureau of Engraving and Printing. The acronym of that is BEP, the BEEP, BEEP, mm -hmm. BEEP, however they call it. In 2020, the Fed ordered, again for another of magnitude, the printing of 5.2 billion Federal Reserve notes. Federal Reserve notes is actually the official name of the US banknotes for a total estimated value of, this time I've noted it, 146 billion dollars. Okay. So I didn't have to do the math that time. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I said it very wrong. So 
In the US, mm -hmm. you don't have an ECB, you don't have the European Central Bank, you have the Fed, the Federal Reserve. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. And the Federal Reserve, um, who get the money printed by the, pre the yeah. Treasury Department Bureau of Engravement and Printing, as you said. Exactly. Um, but okay, it's done by the Fed, uh, essentially. Yes. They're the ones that issue the printing. So in Europe, I got it, it was you have the European Central Bank, and then each country had its national banks, mm -hmm. but the US is one country. So exactly. Is it state banks or, or how does that work? So they do not have such a thing as the network of national central banks as we do in Europe. Actually, in the case of the Fed, the Fed has its own 28 what they call cash offices throughout the country of the United States to whom the money is sent via armored vehicles. Pretty badass, right? 28 cash offices then distribute the cash to the more than 8,000 uh, banks savings and also loans and credit unions across the country. Not only the retail banks uh, receive the cash, paper cash from the Fed. And again, it's the same system. They have a bank account system with the Fed for which we describe the process for Europe. It's exactly the same. Okay, so the Fed has its own cash offices throughout the US. Precisely. Basically. So it's not like ECB to national banks to retail banks. It's Fed, Central Federal Reserve mm -hmm. to cash offices of the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. to retail banks? Retail banks and also credit unions and saving and loans unions and so on. Okay. But so just one point. So it's the Fed that oversees the whole thing. But again, it's the BEP, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing that prints it. It's like European central banks and national central banks oversee and control the markets. But the ones actually printing the money are the... Let me get my finger on it. Uh, high security printing works. That's it. Okay, but these are just companies that they contract out to. Exactly. That's fine. But it's, it, the decisions about that are made by those. those Absolutely. Companies. Yeah. So that's how money gets entered, or cash, sorry, uh, paper cash, uh, physical banknotes are injected into the economy. Yeah. Uh, how about the other way around? When I make a payment or I make a um, deposit in my bank account, mm -hmm. um, does it go all the way up to the to the ECB as well, somehow? Or? So that's very interesting. Um, yeah, that's one of the pot potential scenarios, isn't it? So, it depends who you pay with that money, right? So it's a bit particular. Let's say you pay, you give your banknotes to an individual because you found something on whatever second hand website exchange uh, of your country. And so you give that banknote to an individual or let's say a very small business chances are rather high that this banknote will be used right away again to purchase something and not even pass by a bank, right? That's also one of the perks of the physical cash because you can exchange it and basically the person who has the money is the holder of the banknote. But in the case of the supermarket, for instance, you pay your groceries with a banknote, a chain or like food, clothes, whatever you, you want to purchase. And even certain small businesses, actually. Sorry, that's a bit blurry. But those will have a process in place to bring this physical money to a bank branch. And this is where the things become interesting, actually. Because once that's the case, they bring the money to the retail bank, then the retail bank, depending on the supply and demand, will potentially send back this money to the European Central Bank. So that's a possibility. Or just re-inject it, again, through ATMs or whatsoever, onto the market. Okay, so it can go all the way back to the central bank. But why? Why does the central bank collect all the cash again? So they wouldn't purposefully collect all the cash, but it's a whole management of supply and demand, right? Depending on how much physical cash is needed, the retail banks will, let's say, everybody pays in physical cash as of now. And in one week time, your retail bank, Barclays, BNP, ING, will be f their vaults will be full with cash. But all of a sudden, nobody wants to use cash anymore. So they are sitting on this physical paper that they cannot inject, invest whatsoever via electronic means. So they say, okay, look, I'm going to drop all this money at the central bank, the mm -hmm. physical cash, credit my physical, sorry, my non-physical bank account with that money and then use it on the financial market. Just like I would deposit cash in my bank and then get it in my bank account, the retail banks would deposit their cash with the in the UK, uh, sorry, in the EU um, with their national bank uh, or in the in the US with their cash office of the Fed. Spot on. Right. Exactly. Okay. Very clear. So 
uh, when I go to pay cash in the grocery store, that's mm-hmm. in the cash register, the supermarket would then deposit it with their bank, yes. I guess. Yes. Uh, and then the bank would decide, okay, if I have too much cash, I deposit it with my Fed cash mm-hmm. office or my uh, national bank, right? Exactly. Uh, and and so on that, that's interesting. Let's, let's break that down a little bit because as a corporate treasurer, that's, that's why we want to end, right? To discuss mm-hmm. how you integrate that into corporate treasury. So you mentioned the cashier. That's a very important one. As a corporate, when you decide that you will accept banknote payments from your customer, if you're a retail business, you kind of do not have a choice, right? But it can be the case that B2B, for instance, decide to accept cash or any other retail type of things. And you can see that certain cafes and certain like selling points now do not accept cash anymore. So it's really a strategy business driven decision. But so let's say you are. The first thing you the first thing you need is you need a cash register to store the paper cash that you receive or a vault um, in order to save the money or like have it in a safe safe place before you send it to your retail bank. And on top of that you need a process uh, and preferably a safe one. So you want process to bring this money, let's say at the end of the day or the week, depending on the amounts, to a bank branch. The money will then be credited on your bank account. Okay. So the employees just take the money to the bank? Uh, You wish. Or actually, you wish not. It depends. So it can indeed happen that the employee, at the end of the day, okay, I have my cashier full of cash, I would just bring it to the bank branch. Um, But as soon as there is a proper process in place, that will be done more via a specialized third party. Those third parties have qualified people and armored vehicles, which can be quite handy in case of transportation of a lot of cash. Um, and it comes, of course, at a certain price. But it's definitely better safe than sorry in this case. So you may have seen one of those uh, Brinks trucks. Does that, does that ring a bell? Like this armored vehicle with yeah. uh, Brinks in blue? In the UK, we had a company called G4S. G4S, G4S is exactly. a very big company in the UK that yeah. does exactly that. They will do the same, exactly. So yeah. that will be their job, actually. They will go from retail shops to retail shops and collect the money, usually at night or at certain... They vary the hours, not to be predictable, mm-hmm. and they get the amount of money safely to the bank branch or directly to a national bank. Actually, that can happen. In the case of very small businesses, you can have the owner directly. I'm thinking of a butcher, for instance. He wouldn't have a process like this in place. He will bring the money directly to the bank branch. But that can become unsafe. And on top of that, in um, certain countries, it's definitely not recommended because of the safety issue. 